What's up, guys? Welcome to the How's It Clay podcast, the number one podcast on culture, where we talk about Web3, fashion, music, film, the internet, and all this crazy <laughs> shit around the world that's <laughs> happening right now. Drama, all the drama for your mama. I am your host, Digital Jeff. Rolando Sanchez. This is the special edition on the go at the airport. <laughs> We've been stuck here for about eight hours now. <laughs> uh, Dallas Fort Worth airport to be exact. Dallas Fort Worth and it's actually our home our home base, mm-hmm. Texas, where we're from. So let's get it going. We're not flying to Ontario, we're not flying to LAX anymore. The reason we're going to LAX or to Los Angeles, California. I'll let Roland tell you. Alright, so if you guys watched our last episode We made an announcement about this new project that we're working on, this documentary series called Doxed. Um, If you haven't watched the last episode, we go more into detail about what that is. Um, But on the topic of of Doxed, we are on our way to LA to shoot episode two. Two. Technically two and part of episode three. So we got two shoots of Doxed and another special episode of Officer Clay podcast scheduled. So we're on our way to LA to shoot. Yeah, Shoot. And we yeah. have uh, Josh, which is our engineer. He's already he's been waiting for us all day. Shout out to Josh. Shout out to Josh for waiting for us. And uh, all our equipment is already in Los Angeles. The only thing we have on us right now are two mics, a camera. Oh, you know, you got a, you got a lot more stuff here, right? I know. Uh, I'll, I'll do a run through of my of my gear right now at the end of this video. Yeah. So Roland always carries like enough gear to us for us to survive. We, survive. <laughs> we can make a movie with what he has in his bag. Yeah, I have this um this mantra. Of everything that I carry in my backpack when I travel, I can survive like if I get stranded in any part of the world. So oh. it's usually my laptop, camera, a couple of hard drives, chargers. How many batteries do you have for the camera? Uh, I think we're at eight. Eight batteries. Eight batteries. It's fully charged, cleared cards. I'm ready for war. We can shoot a whole. <laughs> we should. We should a whole movie with that. <laughs> yeah. If for any reason our flight gets canceled tonight. We uh, we'll make we'll make something. We'll film something we got, right there. We got gotcha. y'all. We got gotcha. y'all. Yeah. But yeah, we're just excited because this is something that's gonna be ongoing. We have a world tour happening. When we come back from LA, we're gonna be there for a week, and then we go to Austin, Texas, our hometown. Well, not our hometown. Texas, Texas. I, I feel like the deeper we, the closer we get to South Texas, it feels it, closer. It to It feels home. like home. It, it feels like home right yeah, now. Uh, Honestly. And after Austin, then we go back to Alabama for a few days, and then we go to New York City. We got NFT NYC happening, and we're, there's a bunch of events that we're, we're going to be part of. If you do want to be part of Luna City Party, it's happening on June 21st. You do need an MV3 access pass. Get your passes. Roland's going to have the whole production crew, you know, cameras. Unlocked. I'm going to get that. I got that We're going to be documenting. This is going to be a historical moment for not only for MV3, but like for the Web3 space. The Web3 space. So, Make sure you're part of that. All right, guys. So if you're still watching, like I mentioned in the video, I'm going to quickly run through what I travel with or what I have been traveling with lately. Check it out. Come here. Come here. Come here. All right. So this, this is the, this is the toolkit. This is the toolkit on this side. We got our batteries. Uh, we got our glass. I have, lately, I've been carrying all these lenses. We got the 85 millimeter, 17 to 40, 100 millimeter. So I got, I got I get some variety. Go to wide and telephoto. I got my pro photo flash. You know I always got that thing on me. Need some flash power, some show power. GoPro. You never know when this little, this guy might come in clutch. Uh, an extra body. This is my 6D Mark II. Jeff is currently shooting on this Canon R6, which is what we do most of our video like on the go stuff with. Another lens out here. Another 50 millimeter. And then some, one of my favorite things in here is the are these little guys. Got some light cubes. You can change the color on this to whatever you want. On this other bag, I have, like I said, my laptop and the secret weapon. Check it out. This little guy right here. This is where all the goods are stored. An external hard drive. And then this is another key to success over here. We got our card wallet. This is our ammo. It's pretty much our ammo. Always oh, strapped. Let's dive a little bit into. Uh, I don't know if you want to, but that little notebook that you found. Oh, well, it's over there. Yeah. We're just summarizing, no? Oh, you want to, I got it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Take two. Okay. So <laughs> while he's getting that, this morning, 5 a.m., my son Jeff, Jeff's 20 years old. When I say my son, you might, you guys might think he's a little kid, but no, Jeff is 20. I had him, uh, I had Jeff when I was 18, officially. 
but he's driving me and rolling to the airport this morning and as we're driving there he's like dad like this is bothering me for my leg he has over me this journal and i grab the journal and it's like pitch black like you know it's five in the, five, five, five a.m 4 40 bro and i just grab the journal i'm like dude this what is this journal here so i end up turning on with the headlights and i end up seeing it's my filmmaking journal and i've been writing notes in that journal for many years but i also forgot about it i forgot about i forgot i had that filmmaking journal <laughs> so it was just like perfect timing you know as we're as we as we're filming this new season of docs the first ever as the first time i get i get i get to produce something for my creative vision and it came out of perfect timing for me to re remember like the love and the passion that i have for filmmaking but also like the technical and the, all the inter interesting parts about like telling a story and there's a lot of uh, like magic okay, hap magic. manifestation magic, happening bro. when you're trying to tell a story but anyway so I found the book and let me pull it out yeah about, about an hour ago we were sitting at a restaurant and I told him to just read out loud some one-liners some one-liners and as he was reading these I was like picturing of how I can apply it to everything we got going on right now it's crazy. This is perfect crazy. timing. It's like, the fact that my on. son gave it to me without him knowing, it said it's bothering my leg here. Like, get, grab this as he's driving. Shout out to Jeff Jr. Yeah, so the first page was super powerful. I wrote it on the first page. And this is something personal to me because I've, I've never actually had like big budgets to work with in any of my artistry, like photography, video, anything. I've never actually had a big budget. I've never, had, I've never actually worked with a budget before. It's the first time I ever was working in the budget, this show here. But this is what I wrote. I wrote, you don't have expensive cameras. You don't have expensive lights. You don't have expensive sound equipment. You don't have anything that's expensive. All you have is you. If you really want to share a story, you will find a way to it. And that's the way the journal starts. And, you know, this journal is just filled with all these, uh, let me do a close up, all these pages of just random notes. When did you start it? Oh, this one, this one is specifically, mm -hmm. I wrote it April 29, 2019, which is not a long time ago, but I, I actually have more filmmaking journals from, you know, probably from 2003, 2004. Nice. Yeah. And it's all filled with like these nuggets that come to me or that I've learned from other people. Like this one, absorb the history of cinema as much as possible. Hence you loving to go to the movies. Yeah. <laughs> Learn from the old masters. Learn what to keep and what to reject. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. So a lot of people like always like say, hey, like, you copy this from this person, yada, yada, yada. Copying is okay as long as you find a way to make it your own or just because you love their work doesn't mean you have to love all of it. You yeah. can love like- A part of it. Like 99% of it. Yeah. yeah. Ah, la <laughs> Don't copy 100% of it. Just copy 99.9. 99. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, you know what I mean? So yeah, like you reject, like there's some things that you don't like about somebody that inspires you and just leave that away. Like, and then that's how it, you slowly start developing your, your, your style. Your own style, yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. The value of a shot. Each shot takes on its own life. The story drives the shot. If you want to direct, write your own stories. So for me growing up, I always I would write my own like essays, journals, just different stories that I would come up with. And I would come up with the name of the character and I would come up with like, I would always use Tony for a lot of my characters for some reason. Tony was- Tony. No, like, no, it was weird because I didn't even, I hadn't even seen Scarface. Oh shit. Uh, that I, I, Tony was just a character that I, okay. was a funny guy that I, that I came up with in my mind, but I would always use him as a, as a guy that's happening, things are happening to him. That was the name of my first dog. Tony. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, write your own stories. That's the way you can start finding your voice and your style. Because if you don't like write your own stories, then what are you doing? You know, like, how do you, how can you direct something if you're not writing your own things. I guess, I guess like the, the whole recreating videos and stuff is perfect for like when you're beginning just to yeah. get a little familiar with the technical side of stuff. But I feel like once you just break that barrier of it becoming like a second nature, just start expressing what's in your mind, dude. It's, yeah. I love that. I love that concept. Well, and another thing is like, there's this another thing I wrote down here. Like if you're a director specifically, this is more of your director, you just want to direct your own films. Don't focus on learning all the technical parts. Like, you gotta trust, you gotta 
first of all, like find people that are good at doing things. Like you can find somebody like me that's been doing camera work for like 15 years. And if you just come as a director, then I can help you bring your ideas to life. It's like different skills, just collaborating for exactly. like bringing the big picture to but life. But if you spend an entire life just trying to learn everything, you're never gonna start, you're never gonna start directing, you're, not, you're never gonna start your first short film. I, I don't even like showing my, the stuff that I've done in the past, but when I see him, you know, me personally, like the, just the fact that I did him, being so naive, you know, at the time that I, at the time of me doing them, I thought they were like amazing. We recently went on a, on a rabbit hole that yeah. we went through his archives on. Yeah. They're, I, on, they're, they're yeah. on the internet. <laughs> they're on the internet. <laughs> Somewhere in the interwebs. Somewhere in there. But yeah, I think, I think a lot of us, we get overwhelmed with wanting to learn all the technical side of things, the latest equipment, the latest cameras, the latest lights, and you, you become a techie at a certain point. Which is cool, like it's exciting, but that don't let us not move you forward. I mean, it does to some extent. I mean, if you always have the budget for it, have the luxury to have all of this great gear, but nah, I think the storytelling is way more valuable than the technical part of it. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of the problems that I faced in the past was like just not not fully believing that my story was worth telling. Like I knew it was like a badass story. Okay. Like I have some badass scripts See. that I've never shared with people because I just felt like. Oh, like I'm not a Hollywood type guy. I've never made films in the past. Like, mm. and I think I think the most important thing is to understand that if you like the story, if you genuinely like the story, there's a, there's gonna be at least another million people out there that are gonna love that story too. Yeah. There's a million people that love exactly what you love. But I don't know. Things have changed a lot in the last 15 years with like this whole idea of you know vloggers and. You know, this whole this whole debate is like YouTube filmmaking, which I think I, I think it is. But the medium is a message. That's another thing I wrote here. The medium is a message. The medium that's, is a message. Yeah, which that's actually a quote by uh, Marshall McLuhan. He's a uh, somebody I studied back in when I was in college. But ideally, like, if the medium is an iPhone or in this case, like TikTok, okay, you can't do a, you know one-hour film story and yeah. try to put it there. You know, and the message is different. The medium, the medium is the message. What it means, like this idea of like whatever, wherever the medium is, whatever it connects, that's how the message is going to be transcribed. So that's why, like, the Bible is the one, one of the most powerful products in the world, or the most powerful stories in this case. Yeah. You know, because it's it's somebody sits down, and then the medium is this church, this 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 allure of uh, a priest that has like gray hairs and like this dark this deep voice telling you these stories that's and when they open the bible they put it to the sky and like you know that's the, that's yeah, the, the medium. energies are like transcribed through the whole experience of that's it. the medium yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it has a different it has a different message so you got to understand like especially nowadays i think it's even more complicated now more than ever because you just don't know where your your footage is going to end up you could do a one hour long film or two hour whatever and there, somebody cuts a 10 second clip and it goes viral on TikTok. And then how, how, do, how do you have control over that you don't? You know, this is out. All right, so that's gonna be a wrap for today. You have anything else to say? Nah, I'm ready to get to it. Yeah, get, get to it. We're about, to, we're about to, to go on a four day, five day of production. Our backs are gonna be hurting. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna celebrate on the last day, we're gonna go to Toca Madera. Ya lo dijo, ya lo dijo, y'all heard it. So we're gonna, we're gonna go to Toca Madera. We're gonna celebrate at Toca Madera, Madera to, to the restaurant that I love going to in LA. And, uh, and then we're gonna fly back home. And continue getting to it. Yeah, and continue to get into it. It's the time to get to it. Cheers. Cheers. Caffeine, let's go.